I think probably um, what really attracted me was Mr. Gilroy uh, ringing me up and saying, would I be part of it? He was writing it, he was directing it, he was sure running it, and I was just delighted by his enthusiasm, his um, excitement about the project. I mean, we're all so aware of Star Wars. I was very happy to join the universe anyway, but it was very exciting being asked to take part. Well, Marva is Cassian's mother, but she wasn't always his mother. She finds him when he was a child and she takes him home and becomes his mother and looks after him for all those years. And this is both a great thing and a bad thing in that she loves him like a mother, but he's always got this hankering for uh, his sister who he wants to find in Canary or who, who may have left Canary at the same time. So he is a sort of happy but reluctant son, I think, but he loves her too. And she's the only mother he really knows. So it's, uh, that's really who she is, she's his mother. And a very important person in um, Ferrix because she is part of the daughters of Ferrix. She looks after Ferrix. She looks after the community. She's very pro community. She's a very kind person. And I think probably a person who instills very good values into Cassian. I'd worked with Adria in a, a strange series about witches some years back. So it was lovely to see her again, but I have nothing to do with her in the series, sadly. I mean, she's just around. She's part of my community, but not part of my scenes. And uh, no, it was my first time working with Diego, which was just beautiful. And uh, I'm very glad to have done that. And um, I know some of them, of course. Um, uh, the Irish girls I know because we all know each other vaguely from being up from Ireland. So that's been very nice, but we haven't worked together. My scenes were quite contained, you know, I really mainly worked with Cassian. Did I enjoy working with the droid? I so enjoyed it that I would like to have a droid. And I hope I will have a droid if I can live long enough because um, the great thing about B2 is that, you know, Ian Spack, um, has got a personality, definitely has got to understand its master in that it now um, knows, you know, what you can and can't tell Marva. It has a sort of moral compass. It's not keen on lying, which is very good that the droid is meant to be loyal, like a dog is to its owner. Um, and it's now getting very old. So the droid's getting old, like Marva's getting very old. And so the old droid and old Marva live together. So in, in theory, it, it's a happy little relationship. I think what, I mean, I was so impressed initially, but I was impressed, what, what, what impressed me most about the whole thing was, of course, the costumes, which were, when I walked in for my costume fitting, they had different costumes with different aesthetics for different planets. And that you begin to, you know, and these are hundreds of costumes in certain shades that have different references to different parts of Africa or Asia or other historic events other uniforms and then you go to the ferrix world which is responding to a metallic world and you think gosh this is just the costumes and then you get into the costumes which are indeed industrialized in in, in that ferrix is an industrial place and then walk onto the set which is built from it seems some sort of adobe adobe mud but meets this old reused recycled lumps of spaceships and you think god whoever invented this is a genius because it has um, an aesthetic you half recognize and absolutely have never seen before and the detail of this on the sets makes you just want to lick every corner and see you know how did they turn that screw into a little tap or uh, it's ingenious well you know that was your you know great detail on a set makes you feel that you must bring what you can bring. If they have given such detail, then you just need committed performances because the only thing an actor can bring to a period set, and this is a sort of future period set, is the honesty of now and the complexity of now. Because if you bring that, it matches the detail that is believable. What you're trying to do is sell the impossible to an audience who say, prove it that we should believe you. Why should we believe you? And you say, because look at that set and look at these performances. I think I liked best the whole experience of being able to play somebody who is 
old and near death, whose life should be over, but who, as the series develops, you begin to realize had a completely different earlier life with a swashbuckling pirate who went around the universe collecting lumps of metal and turning them into spaceships who could mend spaceships, somebody very unlike me. And um, I really enjoyed that. And I also really enjoyed that this character is not somehow shelved as being part of the background of Cassian's life, but rather is implicitly necessary and an ignition key to the entire rebellion that then occurs. I hope that the viewers experience themselves and can imagine themselves in those situations so that, you know, ident if they can identify with the characters, the characters are there for them to identify with. They're as complex as the people watching it. They are not in any way black and white or good or bad. They are um, characters full of the depth, problems, and difficulties of living in a world that is changing under their feet, as is ours. 